greetings, saints of God. It is an honor to stand before you. We thank God for the opportunity that he is giving me to come and minister unto you. I want to recognize the Father God for this opportunity and the leadership of this ministry, TKPM, as a whole. I want to recognize our leader, Dr. Pastor Ian Love, and our beloved mother, Evangelist Angel Love, for, give, for granting me this opportunity to come and minister unto the people of God. It is an honor for me. Maybe we can pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you are giving me to come and minister unto your people. I believe, God, it is you who sent me to minister unto your people. It is your word that you have put in my heart to come and share with your people. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity. Amen. Uh, people of God, I want to share a simple ministration in this opportunity that I've been given by the leadership of this ministry. I want to share on a subject the lifestyle of a Christian believer. People of God, when I'm saying a Christian believer, I'll be talking about the follower of Jesus Christ, the someone who is born again, someone who accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, someone who decided to walk the walk of faith of Jesus Christ. I've just listed the few points which I'll be going through. My point number one, a Christian believer must have a prayerful life. The person must create a time to pray as the Bible encourages us to pray without ceasing. Maybe you can read it in First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 17. You can read it. Right. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. No matter our busy schedule, we have to create time for prayer. Like, like, like people like Daniel, who was praying through, he was even in a foreign land, he was praying three times a day. You can read it in, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 says, now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his widow, window open towards Jerusalem, with, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before the, his father as he was his customs, as he was as was his customs since early days. As we see that his lifestyle, the Bible says, as his customs since early days. So that's the lifestyle that we must have as a Christian believers, the life of prayerful. We can't survive this wicked world without being prayerful. We can't survive we can't, we can't even, even, even maintain our salvation without prayer life. To maintain our salvation, we have to pray. We have to have a life of prayer. Prayer lives help us to have good relationship with God. That's what makes us sons of God, is prayer. Without prayer, God is not in us. Prayer life maintains our salvation because it keeps us very close to Jesus. That's what makes us 
the followers of Jesus Christ is prayer life. That's, that's how we communicate with Jesus Christ, by prayer. My point number two, a Christian believer must have a thankful heart towards God, toward God and other people. If we read in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, Let's read Thessalonians 5, 18. Verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. This is the will of God to give thanks in everything. In every situation, even if, if, you, if you are bound in a bad situation, we have to give thanks to God. Sometimes God will be allowing that situation to mold our character. Because sometimes as people we have that my I don't I, I, I don't want to say it's a mindset, but it, 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 it's the thing which is within us that we learn by pain. That, 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 that's the, the, the character we have as people. So we have to give things because God will be allowing that thing or that problem or that situation to mold our character. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God, even the Father. Also, we have to also... Also, we have to thank other people. Appreciate them for being in your life. For, if, for their help that you are get, getting from, then just say something good about them. To, to, talk about, to talk to other people, we have to talk nicely to other people. We have to talk good things to other people. That's the life of a, of a Christian believer. Don't bad the mouth other people. Don't look down upon other people. We have to appreciate other people, what they are doing for being around in your life. Just appreciate them. It's a good thing. It's a good thing even to our heart to appreciate other people. Then I'll go to the point number three. A Christian believer must study the Bible seriously and live accordingly. For it is the benefit for a believer to study the word of God. It gives wisdom, understanding, and our purpose. As a believer, and the word of God gives us the guidelines of our Christian hope. That's where we get our guidelines. We can't go without the, the, the Bible in our Christian life. We can't leave it. We can't leave it aside. We have to apply in every situation, in every step, we have applied it in our lives. Let's read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your prosperous, and then you will have good success. The understanding of Christianity's life, we find it in the word of God. To understand our work is in the word of God. To maintain our salvation is in the word of God. To understand what is right or wrong, we find it in the word of God. And to have a prosper and successful life, we have to be guided by the word of God. Because sometimes, as people, we like shortcuts. But in Christianity life, there's no shortcut. Don't need to go and do the wrong things to be successful. 
but we have to follow the guidelines of the word of God. Let's read Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Just underline the word learning. What is in the word of God is for us to learn how to walk with the walk of faith, how to live a righteous life, how to be in the good books of our Lord Jesus Christ always. It says, for whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we, that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. It give us, gives us hope, the word of God. Every hope that we have, is, we found it in the word of God. The things that we don't understand with our minds, we need the word of God to help us. We apply the word of God in everything that we don't understand. We search the scriptures so that it helps us. The word of God also protects us from deception. There are a lot which is happening in our generation. The devil is not joking. Maybe we can read Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Maybe we can start from verse 10 for the context. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Verse 11. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonians. Fair-minded, those Christians in Berea. In that they received the word with all readiness and searched scriptures daily to find out whether these Things were so. So, the church in Berea, they were searching scriptures after the sermon was being preached unto them. They go to the scripture whether to check that he, the things were, that were being taught were coming from the scripture. So, that helps them from deception, from taking the wrong things from people who will teach them, or from Paul, even if I can say from Paul, from Paul, because Paul was the one who was teaching them here. But they understand that even Paul, powerful as he was, sometimes they have to apply the scripture of the things, what he was saying unto them. Let's go to Psalms 18 verse 30. As for God, his ways is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. The word of the Lord is proven. The word of the Lord is proven. That's the only thing that, that we apply. That's the only word that we can apply in our lives and not being lost. And he is the shield to all who trust in him. The word of God also revive our faith. Our faith is being revived by the word of God. To sustain our faith, to sustain our belief in Christ, we have to stay in the word of God. My point number four, a Christian believer must have a self-control. There are things a Christian believer that is supposed not to do. We are not supposed just to, to live anyhow, just to do anyhow, just to be found anyway, just to, to, to be anywhere in any time. We don't live like that as Christians. For example, if I can say, 
we can't watch soccer in a, in a pub, in a bar. Though soccer is not a sin, to watch a soccer is not a sin, but the environment now, it's wrong to us as a Christian. We can't go and watch soccer in, in, in a pub. That, that's being self-control. As a believer, don't allow situation to rule your life. We have to have your self-control as a Christian. There are situations like maybe you are, you are not working, you don't have a job, you don't have anything to feed your family or even to feed yourself. Then someone suggested that he, we must go and try maybe gambling, if I can say. Though there is no scripture in the Bible that says gambling is wrong, but automatically as a Christian you can understand that thing will put you in trouble. Because gambling, what I understand by gambling is there is an addiction in gambling. You can even, when you get a job or when you get a small money, you divert that money to a gambling. Then you don't understand that we need food. Then you take that money to the gambling. But the, the simple way is to take that money and buy food that you don't have. Or you buy a cloth that you don't have. Or you buy a rent that you don't have that money for. So the, the, the shortcut is, to, is, to, is to, to take that money, not to do the gambling as a Christian. Maybe you can read the, the story of, of Esau and Jacob in Genesis chapter 20, 25, verse 29 to 34. Genesis 25, verse 29. Now Jacob cooked his stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright. Of, the, of, of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. What is the birthright to me? You understand? Now, now Esau allowed hunger in his life to, to take away his birthright. You see? So, as a Christian, there are situations we cannot allow to take what belongs to us. Let's continue. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as this day. And Esau said, look, I am about to die. So what is the birthright to me? Then Jacob said, swear to me as, as this day. So he sold to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. That is how despise his birthright. This is how Esau lost his birthright to his brother for allowing temporary situation in his life. So there are things that come temporarily in us. Maybe, maybe that, that example that I gave for not having a job. Then we allow that situation and then maybe start, start robbing people. That thing will end up destroy you, or you're, maybe you can end up being killed or being gun shot. You see, for allowing a temporary, just a temporary thing in your life, then you lose everything that we have. Maybe if we can go to, to, to the story of, of David and Bathsheba. We understand the consequences that David went after sleeping with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. That's lack of self-control. So you can't live that life as a Christian believer of losing self-control. No, we can't allow it in that way. 
then you go to the point number five. As a Christian believer, you have to avoid the wrong association. Wrong association. It is very important who we associate it with. It is very important. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good habits. Bad company serious corrupts the good character of a person. We cannot associate with the people who don't have the same belief with us. What can we learn? from the people who don't have the same belief. If we, do, if we can say we are, the, we are the children of the light, ah, sometimes we have to be reasonable. Those people will be doing their stuff there. What will we be doing in them? What will we tell them? We are not, we are not saying we are supposed to hate those people, no. We are not hating them. But what they are doing, we don't do it. The lifestyle that they are living is not ours. It's not our lifestyle. We cannot associate with the people who don't have the same belief. For example, spending most of your time with the people who are drinking beer. Or at least we don't, we don't drink beer. I will just take, maybe you, you can say, ah, I will be taking juice. They will drink their beer. I will only take it, drinks, juice. You see? But it is very dangerous. You'll end up trying to taste what they are drinking. Because the lifestyle that we, are, we will be doing is the lifestyle of unrighteousness. You, see? you can even, even, even derail from your faith with the just association. Maybe let's read the Second Chronicles six. Second Chronicles six, uh, verse fourteen. Verse fourteen. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. The reason why. For what do Russia's and we can have in common. This is the reason. What do we have in common with the unrighteous people? With the people who don't have the, faith, the same faith with us. What do we have? We don't have anything in common with them. The, the, these are the, 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 we, what I can say in mathematical parallel lines. Those things, they cannot join together in a, This does not mean to hate them, but it means what they are doing, we are not supposed to do it. We can't talk to them, showing them. We can't, we can talk to them and show them the light only. That what only. Just to show them the, 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 the life that we are living, that show them the light, that just to introduce Jesus Christ unto them. Yes. Let's read Psalms chapter 119, verse 15. The Bible says, Away from me, you evil doers, that I may keep the commandments of God. To keep the commandment of God, we have to be in the same environment with the people we have the same faith. That's what helps us to keep the commandments of God. The people that have the same faith with you, the people who, who live the same life that we are living, 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 30. And if your right hand calls you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go to hell. The Bible here is not talking about uh, this hand. Because this hand, I, 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 when I, I have faith in Christ, when I'm a Christian believer, I cannot use my hand to steal. So the Bible is not talking about uh, this hand which I have. It's talking about the association. I cannot have a friend who say, let's go and steal. I, can have, I cannot have the friends who can say, let's go and humanize as a Christian believer. So, for me to be safe, I have to cut that hand of humanizing. I have to cut that association that says to me, let's go and steal. I have to cut that hand of association that says to me, let's go and watch soccer in the pub. So, that life is not the life that we are supposed to live as a Christian believer. And if you can read, even, even, even in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, the Bible says, Iron sharpens iron. So which means, as Christian believers, they are the only association that we have is the, is the, is the people who, who have the same faith with us. So, we, 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 so if iron sharpens iron, so which means a Christian must talk to a Christian. A Christian must associate, associate, associate with another Christian. You see? So here, if, 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 if in, in, in an unbeliever comes to, to a believer, then it's, it's iron and plastic. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the iron and iron there. It's iron and plastic. Somewhere, somehow, the plastic will be torn apart. And the bad part of it, uh, most of the time, it's us who will be a victim of plastics. Us Christians. It's not the unbeliever. Most the unbelievers, they win to us if we associate them. Because if we understand, before we became Christians, there's a life which we're doing before. That, that will be always tempting us to go back to that life. So if we associate with, associate with the wrong people, we'll be trying to go back to, again to, to, the, to the previous life that we used to live. We'll be doing the wrong things. Number six. A Christian believer must serve in the vineyard of God. That's help us even to, to the previous, previous point of association. If we serve in the vineyard of God, we'll be always in a perfect place. We'll be always in a safe place. Tribal means not, not, it's not that we are saying we don't have to work for our families. No, we can go and work our families, but try by all means to be a worker in the vineyard of God, to do something in the, in the house of God, so that we'll be having a good association with other people. You see? Let's, let, let's read First John chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is in, not in him. If we love the things of this world and concentrate more and forget about saving in the house of God, God will be not in us. We'll be outside of God. To be in God, we have to be create the time to come and serve in the house of God. The things of this world temporarily is temporarily is temporarily we live these things. Even if we say we want machines, we want cars, I want to, to live a soft life, then after death, then if some, some other people will take those things. It's nothing. But if we serve in the house of God, there is a benefit that we are going to have. There is a lot of things that God will give us at the second coming of Jesus Christ.
Number seven, Christian believer must be a person of good speech. We don't just talk. We, just, we don't just open our mouth and talk anywhere, anyhow. Sometimes we must, we must not just talk anyhow. Even, even, even if, if we say, talk about other people's best character, what will it benefit us? Even if we see this person is doing, is, is doing a lot of wrong things, we cannot just talk bad. Maybe it's better to go and talk to that person in a good manner than to, 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 to bad mouth those people. It's not good. It's not good for our faith. We will not survive in our Christianity life. We cannot survive. Let's read Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 29. Let no corruption talk come out of your mouth. Let no corruption talk come out of your mouth. But only such as in good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. The things what we, we must talk must be a benefit to other believers. So if we are bad-mouthing someone, is it a benefit to other people? No, you'll be destroying someone's life. You see? You'll be destroying someone's life. Let's read Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. What we are saying now, we'll give account at the judgment day. So as a Christian believer, we must be careful what we are saying, what we are talking about. We must be very, very careful of what we are saying to other people. For by your words, you will be justified. We'll be justified by what we are saying. We are not supposed just to open a mouth. When we see anything, then we will open our mouth. We just talk, just talk, just talk, open a mouth and say, ah, I can say, what, what will they do to me? Ah, there is a saying in the way that someone who, who, who just see anything and talk, you see. So we are not supposed to live that life. And by your words, you will be condemned. The Bible says we will be condemned by what we are saying. By the words. So a Christian believer, their tongue must be changed to everyone. A changed tongue is a tree of life. But preservedness in it breaks the spirit. You see, Maybe you can go to a point number eight. A Christian believer must be a good example. A Christian believer must be a good example. The life we are living must represent God and the Father and Jesus Christ. The things we are saying most to the public must be aligned to our private life. We can't say we are Christians, then outside the day in the world we are something else. We can't live a double-minded life. We can't, we can't live a dual life as a Christian. We can't say we are a Christian, then outside there we can go and consult some gomas. That's not being a Christian. We can't do that life as a Christian. A Christian must live a one life, a righteous life. The life of holiness. The life of depending upon God. In every situation, we have to depend. We have to call upon the name of the Lord in every situation. We have to call Jesus in our situation. That's only hope that we have is Jesus Christ. There's no other life 
beside Jesus Christ that we are supposed to live. That's what a Christian believer must be. As I draw to, I draw, draw now, now to my conclusion, I have got to point number nine. A Christian believer must understand that help comes from the Lord only. Our help comes from our Father. People of this world, they have so many survival schemes. Like I was talking about gambling. You can't gamble. That's not how a Christian must survive this life. A Christian must know that in every situation, when no matter how hard it is, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in Father God. So they seek help from the traditional healers. That's the life of unbelievers, not us Christians. We can't consult. We can't go just anywhere to, 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 to ask for the favors. We'll end up maybe asking the wrong things that will affect our lives, even our next generation. We, we can even attract the wrong spirits by, by, by going to the wrong places. So we have to understand as Christians that our help is only comes from the Father God, not anywhere else. We can't mix our Christian life with darkness. Our Christian life is pure. Our Christian life is only in the hands of God. The only source that we have as Christians we have to go to the Father. We have to depend upon the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help us. As Jesus said, when I go, the Spirit, of, the Holy Spirit will come and will teach you the all truth. The tr only truth that we need comes from God. The only truth to survive this life comes only from the Father, not from this of world. This world, you don't have anything in common with the, the things of this world. The things of this world will pass but our faith in God will stand forever. Maybe let's, let's read Psalms 121 from verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. God is the one who created everything that we, we need in this, in this world. So when we need anything from this world, we go to the Father. We kneel down and pray and plead the message of the, of the Lord in our situations. He will not let your foot slip. He, he who watches over you will not slumber. Our God will not slumber. No matter we see the situation in our life and we think, oh, no, God will not leave us nor forsake us. He, he, he is always with us in every situation, in any way, in any pain. God is with us. He will not give us the things that, that will affect our lives. No. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He is the one who is able to, 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 to save us. He is the one who is able to protect us. He will not leave us to be harmed. Only if we trust in him. Only if we, we understand that our helps come from the Father. Only if we, we put our trust in, in God. He will save us from any harm. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. God knows the things which are supposed to come in our lives, knows the things which he may put aside those things from us. Sometimes when he, God allows the situation, it's for our own good. It's for our, for our own molding, our character. So we have to trust God in everything. Let's read Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the steps of the wickedness. Blessed is the one 
who does not walk in the steps of the wickedness or sit in the company of mockers, but who delights in the law of the Lord. We have to depend upon the laws of the Lord in every situation. We have to apply the laws of the Lord, no matter how hard it is. The laws of the Lord will save us in every schemes, will save us in any dangers of this world, will save us in any, in any darkness things that will come into our lives. It's only the word of God that will help us, that will risk us from that situation. The person that depends upon the word of God. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 says, That person is like a tree planted, in, planted by the streams of waters, which yield its fruit in its season. That's a life of a believer. That's a life of a Christian believer. We cannot just live anyhow. God will provide, consider that we are in, 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 in his footsteps. We can't say God, God, God he has denied us the, the, the freedom. While least we run around the world doing the wrong things. No. We'll be putting God in a wrong place. While least it's us who will be in a wrong place. And whose leaf does not wither. We, we cannot lack anything when we are in God. We cannot lack anything when we trust God. So we have to trust God in every situation. We have to trust God. As I conclude my ministration, the things that will maintain all the things that I was talking about is the life of holiness. The life of holiness, we have to try by all means to live a life of righteousness as believers in Christ. That life will make us avoid so many things of this world because our eyes will be focusing only in Jesus. Our lives will be maintained by the life of righteousness, by the life of holiness. Our character will be molded by the, that life that we believe in. Children of God, with these words, I believe there's a lot that we learned from my ministration. I believe it is God who ordained me in this time to minister unto you. Maybe you can pray and close our ministration. Father God, we thank you for this ministration, for your word, which was spoken in this time. We believe, Father God, will change our character, will make us aware of our Christian life, will make us do the right things, will guide us in all truth, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you.